I always say <laughs> our house is like a department store, only bigger. <laughs> <laughs>gigantically enormous the rooms are you know like three quarters of a football field really and the ceilings are 16 feet high like that but the way you've warmed it up with the colors and the tones and because it's not overly it's not ornate ornate it's not rococo you know it's just <laughs> I know those are terms that I've learned through this process but um, you walk in and you feel God, so comfortable here. I think the truth is that it's not like I intended to set out to create a homey feeling. Two things. Number one, um, there's no room in the house that you can't touch. There's no fancy formal living room that you can't sit on this, you can't. Everyone can go everywhere and my kids can hang out anywhere yeah. and feel comfortable. And I think that's part of the reason why it feels homey. And then I think honestly, and maybe this will sound silly, but I think it's our family. I think we're very loving and tight and have a lot of fun in our house and there's a lot of laughter in our house and I think that's what makes a home. It's so big though, the kitchen family living space that when we're eating dinner cocoa, you can get up, take a break and do cartwheels. Or they could do dance routines. Sometimes we, so yes, yeah, sometimes we put, so Coco's a black belt in Taekwondo and she's got this huge like, what do you call that thing? Target? The punching bag thing. That she can and hit and kick. And we put it in there. We put it in there and she just punches and kicks while we eat. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of space. We, in our last house, we had an intercom system. We don't even have an intercom no. system. We just text each other. Well, it's funny because... Face my Coco will FaceTime us if we're downstairs and she's in her room. She'll FaceTime us and be like, where are you guys? I'm like, we're in the kitchen. Come down. What's amazing is we have, since we have four kids, they have friends over. We had 17 kids over, a bunch of which were sort of teenagers making a lot of noise. I never once heard them. The house is that big. What inspired the gong? Oh, I love my gong. Okay, our friends at Bellas told us this story about a bell behind this bar that they used to go to and everyone would chip ice at the bell. And I thought, that is so cool, right? So I'm like, we need a bell. So we got a bell and then we had it engraved with something. Uh, Everything you want right now. Which is uh, this sign that Glenn Geller, who's the former president of CBS, now a uh, producer, had on his wall when I first met him years ago and I always loved that. So I had that engraved on the bell. So we started going, like, oh, we're gonna chip ice at the bell. And the bell is cool, but you know what would be cooler? I think we need a gong. Well, we're sort of Buddhists. Yeah, you know? we're Buju's. We're very Buddhist oriented. And so the gong is very Buddhist. I just, I love the gong. But the wind knocked it over. Once. Oh, and broke the steps broke on the a side. Solid concrete step. That's how big the gong that is. <laughs> now the gong has a cover. Yes. And when it's very windy, we lay the gong down. Right. And the gong has an assistant that we've hired <laughs> just, to, just to do things for it. <laughs> He's <joking>. stupid. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you want to subscribe, click here. If you want to see more, click here.